Hello friends, this is Elijah with the Cryptid Studies Institute bringing you the next installment of our Tales from the Holler book series. Before we begin, I'd like to mention once again that the Tales from the Holler stories are completely fictional and they're just for entertainment purposes. They are in no way meant to be accepted as fact or as a true story. However, I do want to mention that anything else that we do here on this channel is the truth or has been presented to us as truth. Either way, we will never go down a dishonest path in producing videos here on the channel. And with that out of the way, I truly hope you enjoy this next installment of the Tales from the Holler series, Tabacula. We were out in the barn when my grandfather said, Let me tell you a tale of the redneck undead. I know you've heard stories and read books about Dracula. Now boy, let me tell you the tale of Tabacula. It was fall of the year back in 2002. That's the year that this big city vampire came through. He must have been hungry and feeling quite peckish, because he stayed there for weeks eating folks that's redneckish. He chowed down on folks that was fat or was thin, those that had teeth or not one in their grin. Nobody here on the mountain about would go out at night, even stick their head out. No one, that is, except one local yokel, our yodeling champ who could be very vocal. He wasn't as scared of this big city biter. Our yodeling champ was an excellent fighter. The yodeling champ's name was Cletus McSween, and he was out digging taters till 7.15. He was sweaty and dirty from all of his digging, and on his way home planned to do some frog gigging. With his gig in his hand and his dog at his heels, and a big sack of taters that would last many meals. With a chaw tobacco he majestically strode, down to the pond where the bullfrogs abode. He is thinking those frog legs would be so delicious when behind the outhouse he heard something suspicious. With a move that was slicker than a piece of fat back, he threw down his taters and braced for attack. With juice from backer dripping down on his chin, his gig in his hand and a half toothless grin, Cletus McSwain was standing his ground as he looked to the outhouse for the source of the sound. Cletus was so scared when he saw his attacker. Cletus dang near swallowed half of his tobacco. The city-fied vampire that dressed like a dandy and staring at Cletus like a piece of hard candy. Cletus thought, man, I'm in very deep trouble. As the juice from his chaw made his gut start to bubble. Before he could scream or yodel or shout, the vampire was on him and opened mouth. He chomped down on Cletus and started to drink. But his eyes missed it up because of Cletus's stink. Cletus McSween never bothered to shave, never changed clothes, never did bathe. The city-fied vampire gagged and he heaved. He smelled Cletus's breath every time that he breathed. Never before had he smelled such a stink. For the first time ever, he abandoned his drink. The vampire was ready to stand and depart when Cletus's gig stabbed him right in the heart. He never did shout nor scream, nor did fuss. He simply looked shocked as he crumbled to dust. Cletus McSween passed on as well, but he didn't stay dead like the old-timers tell. Sometimes you'll hear on the cold autumn breeze the sound of faint yodeling pass through the trees. Then fear grips your heart, and your blood turns to gravy as you pray that your mind's playing tricks, and just maybe, that if you turn around, he won't be there at all, in his long denim cape with his bib overalls, with his long pointy teeth stained with backer and blood, reeking of dirt where his tater patch was, as pale as the fur on a white tail's behind, eyes red and bloodshot like he's been drinking shine. So, listen up now and don't go out at night. Take heed to this tale, it might keep you alive. Forget all them things that you learned about Dracula, and keep your gig handy. Because this is Tabacula.